we're going to look at how easy it is to build, debug, test and deploy a native app using application craft and phone gap with some important help from the Ripple device emulator. Let's log into application craft and take a look at our app. Application craft is it's 100% browser based including the entire IDE. So let's uh, go and find our app. That's the one here, device demo. And here we can see the app that we're going to look at in a bit more detail. Uh, and this is a completely browser-based uh, editor, both for user interface layout and code. So here we've got a number of different pages where we can manage some device-related functions, just for demo purposes, this one only. Um, and uh, we've got all sorts of widgets on the left-hand side for regular desktop use. We've also embedded jQuery Mobile into the system, so you can build some really cool-looking uh, native apps as well. Um, we're using quite a lot of those in this particular demo app. Lots of things like page skipping don't require coding. Let's take a look, for instance, on the home page at this list widget. There's a dialog for this in the property bar. Uh, so, for instance, if I wanted to go to the GPS page, I can tell it without code just to skip directly to it when it's clicked on. Um, but we also have events, so we can code. If I go, for instance, through to this page here, click on the page background, click on the events tab, and you can see we've got a page uh, handler that's called when this page is shown. More on that in a second. So uh, let's just take a look and see how PhoneGap's going to help us access some device features. Uh, and we'll actually look at this uh, page here and see how we can get the current location, and we'll then set the map to our current GPS location. So as we were just seeing, we can go straight in with the page event when this page is actually shown. And here we can see what we're doing first of all here is to check whether we're running in native app mode or not. Um, and assuming we are, what I'm going to do is to set up uh, the GPS get GPS function to be called every second. And that's done up here. So this is the phone gap call, get current position, and here's our callback function. So when the GPS data is returned, we're basically building up um, an array, and we're then calling, this is one of our application craft API functions, populate widget, that will actually populate the widget, let me go back to design mode, here with all of the GPS data. Let's toggle back here. You can also see here we're calling the our API set property function to set the latitude and the lo longitude coordinate on our on our map. So now we're ready to test our app, and for this we're going to use the Ripple emulator, which has got great inbuilt phone gap support. So let's bring it up, and this is just a regular browser window with the uh, the Ripple emulator running as a plugin inside it. And you can see we've got various device settings, um, screen size, orientation, um, for instance, accelerometer, if I wanted to modify that and see how it, the app reacts. Now you can see me rotating the device. You can even shake it. If I go back to the home page, we can look at the uh, GPS information. And here the information that I've got in these fields under geolocation are being transferred and read into the app every time it updates. So if I change that to 1.78, you can see it's updating here as well. And we can also debug. So if I bring up the regular Chrome debugger here and uh, click on GPS, the on-page show event is now going to cause uh, call this debugger statement which brings up the debugger window and now I've got access to all the debugger features. So you can see how nicely we can test and debug without so far having to go through any deployment to an actual device. For those of you who are new to PhoneGap, here's the uh, API refer reference page on the PhoneGap site. You can see that there's a really comprehensive range of uh, features that you can access. So uh, compass information, Good documentation available. You can see here pretty well everything. Camera, 
um, video, audio, contacts, information about the uh, the network, uh, internet connectivity, and so on. So everything really that you're going to need. Right, so having uh, completed the majority of our testing in the emulator, showing you some of the other screens in here, um, we're now ready to go and build our native app. So let's close down the emulator and we're going to leave the IDE and go back to the console. So here we are back in our console and uh, what I can do here is I've got my app selected, hover over the more button, come up to the mobile section and uh, what we have here is uh, the mobile app building dialog and you can see the platforms that uh, we're building for and all I need to do is to click on Build and Rebuild. And that's now going to go and contact the PhoneGap Build API. So this is completely asynchronous. So already now we're just doing the initialization. We're going to upload to PhoneGap Build the web app. Uh, all of Application Cross apps internally are web apps and can be deployed in all sorts of regular ways through browsers, uh, as well as running as web apps on phones. And because this runs asynchronously, I can go away now and do other stuff and um, I can come back in a couple of minutes. Actually normally this takes about just one minute to build all of the uh, uh, all of the different platforms. So um, let's see if it's done. Right, it's done there, the WebOS. Okay, and here we can see it's now finished building off all except BlackBerry. If I want to try out uh, my Android app, I can point my QR code reader at it, download it, run it straight away. Uh, Apple, I can do the same thing. Uh, I've got it provisioned as a on my local iPhone as a development device. And you can see here, if I move this up a bit, it's downloading that. I can then put that into iTunes, transfer it across onto my iPhone, and then run it. We've also got some really nice touches for the final stages of testing and debugging. Let's just bring up the iOS simulator, which I've got running somewhere in the background here. Um, now, this is running in the simulator, but just imagine this is running on your real app deployed to your iPhone uh, or your Android phone, any phone at all. Um, take a look here. It just says info in the top divider for this list. So we're going to change this, and we want to try this out really quickly. Any change, it could be code changes, cosmetic changes. And we want to do this without having to redeploy the actual app. So let's fire up the IDE. And here we have, uh, there's the info. So what I'm going to do now is to change this to uh, information. So let's just change that. Information, save, and now we've got that. Now what I, what we can do is a little trick here, is if I look at this uh, label, we've actually got an event on there, and when it's clicked, it calls this function called switch app, and this is the ID of the app that it's going to switch to. And this is actually the same ID for the app, it's, of this app itself. So what it effectively does is reload the internal components of the app. So all I have to do now is to hit save. And now if I go back to my simulator and I click on that label, you can see it's reloading the app and now it says information. So I can test out pretty well anything I want there without having to go through the lengthy redeploy process. Now another debugging uh, possibility is this really cool winery debugger. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. W-E-I-N-R-E. -E. I call it winery. Uh, and uh, that, let me show you how this works. So I'm going to come into uh, the PhoneGap Build. So we can actually come directly into our PhoneGap Build account. And here you can see my device demo app. I'm going to come into the admin section. Uh, I'm going to click on Edit. And I'm going to enable debug mode. And now the app's going to be rebuilt. And uh, we're actually incorporating this directly into the application craft uh, console, so you don't have to come through and do this. You can select a debug build from it, but at the moment, this is the way to do it. Uh, let's go back to our app screen, and you can see currently those are all being rebuilt. Uh, I'll pause the video here and come back once it's done. It's about a minute's, minute's wait. Here I am again, and uh, it's been built. In debug mode, I'm going to click on the IPA link, and that's now downloading the uh, demo app. 
And uh, let me just move that up so you can see. So again, I'm going to fast forward a bit now because I'm going to get that onto my iPhone and then come back in about 45 seconds. So now that the uh, app's been rebuilt in debug mode, I'm going to click on the admin button and say debug. And what it's going to do, the Winery debug is now going to listen for all and any devices that are currently running. At the moment, I haven't got uh, started up my uh, device demo on the iPhone, which I'm now going to do. So I'm just clicking, uh, pressing the icon now, and we should see any moment. There we go. We can see it's now come online. And uh, I can, on my app, have stuff writing to the console. You can see here we've got sort of different timeline. And in the console, I could be writing output here, or I can be expect inspecting objects. And that's now retrieving that back, and there's the navigator object, and so on. So the combination of application craft and phone gap provides a really compelling solution for anyone wanting to build front ends or prototypes or full-blown production apps where you need access to device hardware or to deploy cross-platform apps through app stores. Thank you for watching.